Now that we're 11 whole days into 2017, it's safe to say that it is in fact a brand new year. A year like none we've ever experienced before. 2016, who cares? That's a distant memory. But what does the future hold? Well, I'm not a gosh darn soothsayer, Sheila, but since you ask, I'm not gonna leave you high and dry. Instead, I'm gonna tell you what 2017 is gonna be like according to the most reputable sources I know, Hollywood movie film. So let's go Stradamus and predict the future. The 2017 Super Bowl will be the last one ever played and the Patriots will win. Remember the 2013 movie Oblivion where Tom Cruise repairs combat drones in the burnt out apocalyptic wastelands of 2077? Well, in that movie, we see the ruins of MetLife Stadium, which was home to the New York Giants and New York Jets, and a banner reading, World Champions 2017. Then Tom Cruise gives a really detailed speech about that game and 80,000 people that were there. And anyway, while the Giants are technically in the playoffs this year, there's not a chance in hell they're actually gonna win the whole thing. What there is a chance of happening, though, is Roger Goodell getting a concussion and simply forgetting to hold Super Bowls from this point forward. So enjoy this last hurrah of buffalo chicken dip, overhyped commercials, and frantic gambling. Oh, and Tom Cruise doesn't mention the Patriots at all, but it's gonna happen, so deal with it, haters. A second civil war will erupt, and our only hope will be a bounty hunting Pamela Anderson. Well, that is if the 1996 film Barbed Wire, based on the Dark Horse comic of the same name, is to be believed. And I think it is to be believed. The movie is basically Casablanca, but set in unpublished Fallout 3 DLC. The US is under martial law, and the last free city is some crappy burg called Steel Harbor. But the good news is that we'll have invented contact lenses that bypass retinal scans and let you leave the country. So if you're not happy about those election results, or if you just really want to study abroad in Canada, just wait until 1-800-CONTACTS drops their big new innovation at CES. Or just start learning how to tend bar so you can work for Pam Anderson at her new bar in the American Wasteland. Because guys, let's be honest, the world always needs more lemon drop martinis. Harry Potter's finally gonna send his kids to an elite wizarding academy. Remember Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2? Well, according to the timeline, the epilogue in which we see an unfortunately digitally aged Harry, Ron, and Hermione sending their little whiz kids to Hogwarts takes place some 19 years after Voldemort got his butt whooped at the Battle of Hogwarts. And that just so happens to be in 2017. Harry and his now wife Ginny Weasley are shipping off their sons James Sirius and Albus Severus, Ron and Hermione are sending their daughter Rose off to the warts, and Draco frickin' Malfoy's son Scorpius Malfoy is going as well. So the big takeaway here should be it's gonna be a great year for private schools, but honestly, I just want you to know how dumb the name Scorpius is. In a series full of arguably stupid names, it is by far the stupidest. And guess what? If you named your kid Scorpius, you're a bad parent. Skynet will finally become self-aware. Remember late August 1997 when you fearfully awaited the moment that Terminator 2 Judgment Day told us would lead to our nuclear murder at the hands of evil robots? Well, that didn't happen. Instead, Terminator Genesis, or as I like to call it, Genesis, retconned that day to take place on August 28th, 2017. And as much as I like to forget that Terminator Genesis ever happened, Siri has been acting really weird lately and like talking with Alexa and Cortana an awful lot, so maybe they were onto something after all. Dan, I wouldn't worry about a thing. Your flesh is safe. In the wake of economic collapse and rising totalitarianism, Arnold Schwarzenegger will expose the terrible truth behind reality TV. Okay, this one is so crazy it almost seems plausible. Back in 1987, Arnold Schwarzenegger starred in a bonkers movie called The Running Man, where he was a wrongfully convicted police helicopter pilot forced to star in a reality TV show where runners must evade armed mercenaries trying to murder them, all in exchange for a chance to be pardoned by the state. Hey, pretty cool prize. It's no Huffy Bicycle, Casio Keyboard, or, uh, I don't know, a week at Space Camp in Atlanta, Georgia, but I guess freedom is pretty cool too. Now, no one's forcing Arnold to star in The Celebrity Apprentice right now, but the way the headlines have been going lately, the scenario put forth by The Running Man seems more likely than you'd think. What I'm hoping for is that every time he says, you're fired, he'll launch a poor bastard on a rocket sled out of the boardroom and outside of a window. Wouldn't that be a sight to see? Adam Sandler will get morbidly obese and Britney Spears will have her 23rd child. When Adam Sandler made a Dr. Moreau-like mashup of It's a Wonderful Life and Back to the Future, the world collectively shrugged and said, okay, sure, whatever. But within this weird 2006 movie is a sequence that takes place in 2017, where Adam Sandler uses a magical remote control to time travel to his perfect life, in which he's nearly eaten himself to death, and Britney Spears has a brood of 23 kids, which means that she needs to have 21 kids by February 5th if this movie is considered accurate. You know, 
That old chestnut. That old, you know what? Never mind. I actually don't want to know how that works, chestnut. Oh, and there was also like this bit about Michael Jackson molesting his own clone, too, in case you were wondering if the script was super sharp across the board. It's not. And that, my friends, is what's gonna happen this year according to Motion Pictures. What do you think will come true? What other predictions would you add to this list? Let me know in the comments below and give me a futuristic thumbs up while you're there. Be sure to like and subscribe or else you might miss next week's show when we talk about the story of a group of aging mercenaries and the horny, easily frustrated minor league pitcher they're inexplicably stuck with and the expendable Durham. Until next time, keep on digging. Let's open up the old mailbag, shall we? At Nitty Two Shoes asks, why did you put Kyle's myth-busting show on your list of picks for TV this year? Did you two have a fight? We had a brutal kung fu battle at the base of a waterfall. There were no survivors, but that was completely unrelated. Now, let me be clear. You should all absolutely be watching Kyle Hill host Mythbusters The Search Saturdays at 9, 8 central on the Science Channel. Highly recommended. At TDK Retweets asks, if you could put Steven Seagal into any video game, what game would it be? Ooh, great question. You know what? I've actually thought long and hard about this, and I would put him into Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater as Big Boss, because holy smokes, would that be an amazingly recontextualized experience. Just picture it. At DeMarco Draws asks, <laughs> sorry, just picturing. Steven Seagal is snake. <laughs> At DeMarco Draws asks, if you could have a real life Pokemon, no other Pokemon exists, just yours, which one and why? My daughter would like to know. Well, young lady, I'm glad your father asked. I would actually like to have a Jigglypuff because I have a really hard time getting to sleep. Sure, I'd wake up with weird stuff drawn on my face, but hey, at least I'll be well rested. But tell me, what Pokemon would you want though? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time.